Hey, how's it going everyone and welcome to my Resident Evil 2 Remake Speedrun Tutorial. So the purpose of this run is to help you guys get a few of the more difficult achievements within the game. Those achievements are Frugalist, complete the game without using a recovery item, Minimalist, clear the game without opening the item box, and a small carbon footprint, which is take 14,000 steps or fewer in one playthrough. I'll be going through this run as Claire, just because she gets the grenade launcher over the shotgun pretty early on within the run. I'm also doing it on the assisted difficulty because if you get into danger with your health it will automatically regenerate you back up to yellow caution which makes things nice and easy when getting that no heals achievement so yeah i hope this helps some of you out let me know in the comment section if it did let's get this going all right so skip those cutscenes i'm pretty sure like a good hour of this run if you included them would be cutscenes there's a lot of cutscenes in this game. When you gain control, if you're playing on mouse and keyboard, you might want to turn aim assist off. I don't know if it will help you guys out on controller. I don't think Res 7 had aim assist at all. Or if it did, it was very weak. But feel free to turn it off. I don't like it on mouse and keyboard. It's entirely up to you. This is the only mode that has it. And we're going to go in here, take the obvious route to this back door, skip these cutscenes, and... Uh, you want to stand still when you're fighting, trying to go for that under 14,000 steps achievement. Fuck? Just because if you're moving around a lot whilst you're aiming, you're obviously counting steps. If you need to, then do it, but if you can just stand still and fight, try to do that as much as you can. Grab that key, head towards this door on the left. Don't go back the way you came because it gets closed up on you. And then... We're going to head back into the store here, through the aisles on the left just here, and quick U-turn past this guy and then to the door I'm going to meet Leon and skip these cutscenes should have three cutscenes here in total and after this one is skipped or after you watch it you're going to need to turn around and head back this way run past all these zombies just take them wide around these cars gotta keep moving Claire don't bother fighting any of these guys. You have very few bullets at the moment, and there's there's no point. So down we go. I feel like from the original, or when compared to the original, this intro is a lot shorter. Getting to the police station takes a lot less time. But never mind. Almost there. You do sort of visit a bit more of Raccoon City a little later as Claire. I haven't done the Leon run yet. That's what's up next. We're gonna do the hardcore run for Claire, and then learn Leon's run. I think. So if you stick to the right of this zombie here, he'll sort of move towards the right to grab you from that side and then just quickly swing left and get around him. Give him the slow-mo jukes. Skip that cutscene at the gate into the police department and then we're just going straight to the right here to pull this switch. And going under the shuttle. Then. Skip that cutscene. We're going to head in here and to our right. And in this room on your left coming up just here there's a few handgun bullets on the floor grab those because we've got very few at the moment i'm gonna need some to get through this back through this door to the left i'm gonna push this cabinet out of the way so in a minute you're gonna get attacked and you're gonna want to ignore the first two zombies try and run past them and then kill the other two just after you get to this shop. It's up to you, you can kill the two zombies that attack you initially right here. But what I like to do is stand on the door, wait for him to pass through and just keep mashing run and then you can just run past him and avoid wasting any bullets on those two zombies. It's up to you though, if you want to play it safe and fight them, feel free. When you get to here, two more zombies are going to show up. You need to hit them with two bullets each in the head to knock them down. Missed one there, but never mind. I like how I can reload while I'm running too. Makes my life a lot easier. Back to the shutters. Two cutscenes to skip. Skip them. And then we get the combat knife, which allows us to get into reception, which is this way. So use that on this box here. And once you get this open, we're going to head through. I think we have to run through this corridor a couple of times. Just wait here though, don't smash your head into the 
the shutter because I think you can like run on the spot when that's happening and I'm pretty sure that wastes steps so try to stand still and wait for it to open and I'm gonna just run past this guy and take the guy that's hanging from the roof there wide just try to stick to the left of him and you shouldn't get the little jump scare it slows clear down for a second keep following this corridor around all the way around and through this door as you come through this door on your left there's some handgun bullets on the desk you need to spin around and head around this room. The map's here if you want to grab it. I grabbed it just in case I got lost and needed to check it, but it's always useful to have. And we're going up these pallets through this window. And when you drop in here, if you turn around straight away, there's some more handgun bullets on this guy's body right here. Grab those. And you've got this cop banging on a vending machine, looking for some donuts. Do you reckon that's how he turned into a zombie? Like, why else would he be going for the uh, vending machine? I don't understand. But anyway, we got lucky and popped his head there, which is always nice because those zombies tend to come back if you don't pop their heads. And it's kind of an RNG thing if you do pop their heads or not. So we'll grab that board that's next to this door. Come in here and in these two lockers you've got some gunpowder and some handgun bullets. Head back out and then we're going to slap the board on this window because we have to come back here a couple of times and it's just one less zombie to deal with, save some bullets, all that stuff. More handgun bullets on this dead cop. It's in the corner there, and this guy's going to be coming down the stairs towards you. Take him down. So be careful when you knock them down like that. Sometimes when you try and run past them, they'll lunge for you on the floor, so just be careful. Heading up, handgun bullets right there on the side, and I'm going to show you guys how to open up all of these locks all of the locks and safes the code for this one is dcm and there's smg bullets inside which i don't want at the moment but um if you do take them you can always discard them if you need to along the way grab the spade key off that desk head through this door we'll get the quick liquor jump scare right there we don't have to worry about those guys for a moment though we've got some gunpowder as we come through this door on the right combine that with the other gunpowder to get some more hangar bullets and then if we come to the back of this room we can find the hip pouch that's on the desk right there before we head into the library through this door, and that's the first hit pouch. It's Marvin. How fast can you get back? Marvin needs us. I've got something to show you. It's important. All right, I'm on my way. I'm not sure if I got all of the hit pouches in this, but I do get a bunch of them. Can get a lot of them along this route. This run really isn't that optimized for speed. More just geared towards getting the achievements. I mean, playing on easy is really not too much of a challenge, but you get that regenerated health. If you get to danger, it'll bring you back up to caution, and that makes it a lot easier to get through without needing oh, no. med items. And the item box as well makes that run nice and easy. So when you get into the library here, there's a few zombies lurking around, and just like I am, you want to try and take them out. Make sure they're on the floor dead before you leave. Just in case you get lucky and get a head pop, really. It's not really to take them out at this point. You can just run past them if you like, but you have to come back here a couple of times. Uh, and if those zombies are lurking around, they can get in your way. So when we get back into the main hall, we're going to go down and see Marvin. Because he wanted to see us. Skip that cutscene. And then we're going to 180 when we regain control to go through this door. And open it with the spade key quickly. Alright, head through this door, and we're going to go open Leon's desk to get an upgrade, so the code for this lock is N-E-D, or NED, it's the easy way to remember it, and the second lock is M-R-G, or Mr. G is the easy way to remember that. That'll open up, and we'll get an upgrade for our gun, which allows us to reload quicker. I guess I don't really think it's necessary to get these, but it just helps a little bit, you know, it makes it a little bit easier on you. Pop this zombie that's in the office over here. Get him on the floor, and then we're going to head over to this safe uh, to get another hit pouch, and the code is 9 right. I'm just going to follow the video. 15 left, and 7 right. So 9, 15, 7, right? Grab the hit pouch, turn around, head back out, and there's a gunpowder on this desk, and some bullets in this locker. Got the bullets first. So spin it around and you've got some instructions on gunpowder that you don't want to grab and some extra gunpowder for you. Grab that. Head back out of here. And then we got to go back up the stairs. 
this way. Sort of regain where I'm going for a second there. I had to think about it, I think. So, uh, the code for this statue is the lion's face, and then the wheat, kind of looks like wheat, and I think this is a, a phoenix or an eagle, some kind of bird. That will unlock the uh, lion medallion, but we're not going to take it just yet, leave it in the statue, and we can grab it on the way back. You don't have to solve that puzzle there, you can do it a little later, but I just do it as I pass it. And then we're going to go through this door, and there's another safe right here. And this, I think this is two out of the three safes that are in the game open already, so six right, two left, and then I think it's twelve right at the end, but... Oh no, it's eleven. Okay, six to eleven. Six to eleven is the code. That one's done. So, we get the upgrade for the laser pistol. Right there, we don't need it right now, but I take it just so we can slam it on a little later. We're going to come into this room, which is the art room, grab the weapons locker key card. And then we've got the hand over here that we need to combine with the book that we grabbed in the library. And then we're going to combine it with a statue to get this staff with the jewel in it that we need. So as soon as you grab this, head into your inventory and the game should give you some tutorials about some stuff. So just skip that, examine the staff or scepter and get the jewel out of it and then discard this key because we don't need it anymore and we can also get rid of the petrol station or the gas station key that we don't need anymore. Head through this door to the left out of there and the helicopter is going to crash into this side of the building. Keep going, keep going, just through the door that's straight ahead of you. Skip this cutscene and Claire will start talking to Marvin here, meaning you can't run, but just grab the items that are around you. You've got a board there in the back corner, some bullets on the barrel right there, and bolt cutters. I like to put these in the first slot just so I can spam use at the doors I need to use them. So, cut this chain off with the bolt cutters, head through here, and then we're going to go through this door. Cut that open also. Right, so when we come into here, there's a flashbang on the desk that we want to grab. And just put that wherever you like. And then we need to seal off this window so this zombie doesn't come in the room right now. There's a cop on the other side of this desk that can be a bit of trouble sometimes. So just take him down. Done. And we've got the fuse on the desk right there. And the valve that we need to get is also in this room. But I want to grab these... Uh, well, this gunpowder first to combine with the gunpowder we've already got to get some acid rounds that we can use a little later. Grab the valve, and then we're heading out of here now. Move this chair out of the way, head out the door, use the fuse on the fuse box right here. And then the shutter's going to open. you got zombies crawling up behind you, just make sure they're not too close. They shouldn't shuffle through the shutter into the main hall, they should just stay in there, so don't worry too much. When you come back into the main hall, there's some bullets on the desk uh, right there next to the typewriter. And then we're going back through reception one more time. This area gets a little more dangerous now, just because uh, the windows are still open and zombies are falling through. So be careful when you come into here. Again, try and avoid this cop that's hanging from the roof. It'll kind of slow you down for a second. You've got a zombie right here that you want to either take down or just stun and run past. And there's another one right here, same sort of thing, you want to stun him. Try and run past. Just keep going, keep going. You want to be quick through this corridor just because there's a lot of zombies. And then we're going to open up this door with the bolt cutters. And I think that's the last use of the bolt cutters. So if you want to, you can throw them away now. Grab the detonator that's on the table right there. And there's also a flashbang. I think I went the wrong way here for a sec. Yeah, it's right there on this desk. And then we're going to go through this door that will lead us back to where the West Office is and the uh, armory. So we'll go in here quickly to grab the grenade launcher. Use the key that we just grabbed in the art room a minute ago. So I will be opening the lockers a little later, but not right now. I discard the bolt cutters there. So now we have enough space for my flame rounds and the grenade launcher. If you're stuck on space by this point, which hopefully you aren't, but if you are, you can always discard your defense items or ammo and stuff. 
to try and make space. I'm pretty sure I could have combined my handgun bullets to make some space at this point, but I was I was okay. I had I had a couple of spaces left. So this cop's gonna blast through the door. Wait for him to come in. Shoot him in the face a few times. His head popped after two, which is always nice. And now we need to go back uh, this way, the blood splattered wall way, to go and use the valve we just picked up. So this is why we locked off this zombie earlier. The cop that we grabbed the bullets off earlier is now going to stand up, so we need to take her out. And I think the guy on the stairs, if you haven't popped his head, will also be roaming around again at this point, so take him out as well. I know that you can really improve on this run just by running past a lot of the zombies, but uh, I just kind of want to produce a safe run that you guys can follow without too much trouble and having to sweat too much, you know what I mean? Come back in here, use the valve right there, and then we can open up this locker. The code is CAP. Open that up. And we got some more flame rounds. And there's some bullets, I think, in here too. More flame rounds. And we're going to grab the little mini safe that's on the side right there, which contains one of the keys to open up the lockers. But that's for later. We're not going to bother with that right now. Those puzzles are annoying, man. So let's uh, open up this door. Got more flame rounds right here. And the liquor's in this corridor, the first liquor. So be ready to fight him. We're going to aim up, take a shot at him, quickly reload. And we want to just take another shot as quick as we can. I got lucky there and he jumped at me and uh, missed his jump. Yeah, good times. He's dead. Wait for the flames to die down on the floor and just run past. And we're going to run into the star's office to grab the battery that's on this desk to combine with the detonator. And then spin it around. There's some more flame rounds on the desk in here. You can leave these till later, but I like to grab them now. Just so we've got more if we need them. So, now we're going to head out this way. Pretty much just following the corridor along still. And out of this door. Now that we're here, we can put the code into the horse statue, which is... See if I can remember this one. Fish. I obviously got it right in the video. I can't really see that too well. What is that? Fish. Uh, hopefully you guys can follow it. Let me see. I've got a little file here that tells me everything. I will look it up for you guys. Because it's mean otherwise. Fish, scorpion, pot. Kind of looks like a water pot pouring water, I guess. Maybe you can see it clearer than I can right now because my... Uh, the editing software I'm watching this back in hasn't got the clearest image. Just so I can watch the video nice and smooth like. So right now we actually want to head up the stairs and I, I took the wrong direction and didn't realise for a second till about here I think. I was like, oh yeah, I'm going the wrong way. So, yeah, we need to go back to the library. Don't do what I just did right there, it's a waste of steps, but it doesn't really matter. Again, try to keep these zombies in here down, because a little later we're going to come in here with... Is it Mr. X? The big guy that stalks you around the police department for a while? And we need to put stuff... Well, we need to do stuff in this room, and if then those zombies are there, it's just an added annoyance. So yeah, we're going to come up the stairs, around the uh, top floor, through this door. And then we're going to grab the bullets that are on the side there, use the detonator on the C4 that's in the back corner of this room. And then just quickly hide over here. Once that's open, you should now have space to open this up. So uh, this one's called is Maiden Bow Snake. Or it's like a woman's face, bow and snake. But you can't see it too well, so you're going to have to look carefully. But uh, you can just about make them out if you look hard. So I'll grab the medallion out of there. Good to go. And when you come to about this point, try to take it slowly. Don't run out of the gated area. Stay in the gated area. So that you can fight this zombie that drops into the room. I think he's crawling at the moment. You can't see him too well. But yeah, he's crawling about the place. A lot of the time he's standing though. So just stand where I am right now and take him out. Until he's not moving. And then when you come back this way, the liquor's going to drop in straight ahead of you right there. So be ready to hit it with a couple of shots out of the grenade launcher. I like to use the grenade launcher and try and finish him up with the handgun sometimes. But that's a bit risky. It's up to you if you want to use... Um, Two grenade shots rather than doing it that way so when you come back that guy might stand up so check that be careful of getting grabbed we can move this thing out of the way now here we go 
and uh, now we're heading back to the main hall. This was my, my mistake before. This run is oh, can definitely be improved upon 100%. And I'm guessing when people learn the route a lot better, this, this run's probably going to be about an hour and 20 minutes, something like that. Because you can run past a lot of the zombies, I'm thinking. So right now, we need to use the... Um... Oh, okay, yeah, I was going to say we need to use the statue we opened up and grabbed the medallion, but I didn't have enough space, so I discarded my combat knife just so I could grab it now and save me running back up the stairs. That's up to you, though, that you could probably get away with going down there, putting two medallions in, coming back up and grabbing the other one. I don't think it's going to take you over the step limit. I would be interested to know how many steps I, I take in this run. I don't think it tells you anywhere, though. You just sort of hope hopeful that you do it fast enough. <laughs> right, we got all the medallions. Slam them in the statue. Open up a statue, and we're going down here. Skip these cutscenes. And uh, as you come in here, there's some more flame rounds on the floor right there. Or on the table on the side. Grab those. Come through here. Open up the elevator. We're going down. And another tip towards not wasting steps is when you're standing in the elevator, just stand still. If you're running around or run, running into the door trying to be as fast as you can, you're probably going to waste steps. There's a lot of areas in the game where you can just sort of like run into the wall and your character doesn't stop. They just sort of run on the spot. So I'm guessing that wastes steps, right? But when you come into this stairway area, come all the way to the bottom and just underneath the stairs you just ran down is a, a frag grenade. So grab that and then we're going to have to go back up the stairs and through the door that's at the top of the first flight. And we're going to have the first boss fight. I mean, you could say that the Lickers are boss fights, but they're kind of just normal enemies to me, really. And you kill them quite easily anyway, just slam them with a couple of grenades and they die really easy. The boss fights usually take a little longer. So we're going to follow this walkway along. Open this up, skip the cutscene, and then turn around and run when you gain control. He's pretty slow at this point, but I like to wait around here. And just use the handgun to keep shooting him. You can use your grenade launcher, but I feel like at this point saving the grenades is pretty vital. So, just keep shooting him in the face as best you can. And then after a few shots, his eye is going to show the mutated eye. And then you want to start aiming for that as much as you can. Literally just aim for that. Pretty sure that's his weak point. If you're doing this on normal or hardcore, he'll sort of do a thing where he jumps up into the uh, roof and then surprises you, but I don't think he does it in assisted. He just sort of chases you like this. And like I said, you can use the grenade launcher, but you can kill him really quick with the pistol, to be honest. And the only reason I'm not doing that is just because I want to save those grenades. So I'd say do the same thing. You've got plenty of handgun ammo. Just keep aiming for that eyeball. You'll know you're close when the eyeball changes colour. Right. Come on, son. It's just... William Smash. William Angry. I think if you listen carefully, he says Sherry, because this is actually Sherry's dad, right? And uh, he says, kill me, I think, as well. Sounds all distorted and stuff. Not happy. Keep shooting that eyeball. Die. Right. So now that that's done, in this room there's a few pickups. I think there's like three sets of handgun bullets, a frag grenade that's just here, and uh, I think there's a couple of herbs as well, but obviously we're not using those. Grab these handgun bullets. Okay, let's go. So a little ways into this run, I did end up getting hurt and running around for the most of this run in caution. But great thing about this mode is that when you grab uh, or when you take damage, you can just wait around and get back up to caution. So it's like the ideal mode to do this running. Right, up we go. This way. Grabbed all those items, hopefully. In this locker in here, we've got... Uh, some more gunpowder, and then we're just gonna leave this room. Keep going this way. And head up these steps to come into this little control room and pull the lever that's right here. It won't move. 
Yeah, Will. You are a tiny child. I am big adult. So what you're saying is we should put you down right now so umbrella people can't breed. Got it. Well, hopefully you'll get to see her again soon. Not a problem. <laughs> so I think at this point in the run is where um, Claire and Leon's runs differ. Hit pouch in this locker. Don't forget to grab that. And I haven't done Leon's run yet. If you're trying to listen to the dialogue, I apologize because a lot of it just gets skipped like right here. And I'm talking over it as well. If you want to see the run... Sort of for the first time, I have done a run like that. My first time through. Just sort of a let's play thing. Skip all these cutscenes after using the uh, parking meter. Yep, 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 yep. And then we're going to go through this door. Head straight when you come in here. And then head to your left. To go through this door and grab the box that's on the table right here. We need that. And then we're just going to leave this place. Let's go. And then we're heading back the way we came into the left. And don't get cocky and try and kill that li liquor that's sneaking on the corner, because I'm pretty sure it just turns around the corner and despawns. It pretty much just counts as one extra liquor you'll have to fight if you shoot it. But come through the door slowly. Try not to run through that door, because this liquor will hear you. And you want to try and kill this guy from outside the room. I know it's tricky because the door closes. Try not to grenade yourself. Then you really want to watch to your right, because that liquor, if he hears you fight the first one, is going to try and get on your lady balls. Here we go. Three. Die. And all that this does standing in the doorway is if he gets too close, you can just close the door. And liquors don't deal with doors too well, so it's nice and easy. But just be careful. Take it slow. This one's still alive, but he's pretty hurt now, so I'm just gonna. I think I ended up hitting him with another grenade. But this is really why you want to save the uh, grenade launcher bullets. But you also need more for later. Here he is. Ah, I got unlucky there and hit in front of him a little bit too much, I think. It's kind of panicking here, like, please die. It's my own fault for missing that grenade shot, though. He did, right. Nice. They are definitely terrifying enemies. There is a, an upgrade for the grenade launcher that allows you to have like a much tighter spread but it takes up another space in the inventory if you get it so I tend not to use it right let's open up this and the key you need is always in this morgue drawer so open it up grab the key and when you do the zombie's gonna stand up right there and we need to run back towards the door there's gonna be another zombie that crawls through the little opening near the door take him out be wary of the guy that's behind you if it, if that one's head doesn't pop like it did for me. Just be careful there. You only really need to take the one out that crawls through so you can come back this way. And uh, when you get back here, you've got another gunpowder you can combine with the one we already have to make some more acid rounds. Combine them together to take up less inventory space and then we're just heading back the way we came. Don't sprint around this corner because there's another liquor here. And you want to Sort of slowly peek around the corner, hit him with a grenade launcher bullet, come back towards the door, and then just wait for him to come round and hit him with another grenade launcher bullet. Obviously you want to be careful because they can crawl on the roof, so he could always come through on the roof for you. So I, I think there's a higher chance of him coming around the corner on the floor, but just be wary that he can crawl across the roof there as well, probably. So now we're going to open up this box right here that we've got by spinning it around and examining the front of it. And we'll get the police car key out of it. Spin that around. Press the button on the front. And this police car's boot is going to open. Giving us the handgun that we can combine with the upgrade we got earlier. And then I want to put this... Uh, I'm discarding the key first because that's the only use for it. But I want to put that in the shortcut my pistol is in at the moment. I don't know if you guys like to change that stuff around. I don't think I did it just yet. But Must be where that guy came from. For just regular pistol use now, I definitely recommend using that laser pistol that we just got. Don't use the one that Claire starts with just because it's way easier uh, to hit your shots with. So the grenade launcher upgrade is in the locker behind us that I talked about earlier. But I'm not going to take that. Just like I said, it takes up an extra inventory space. Means the, <clears throat> excuse me, means the grenade launcher, instead of taking up one space, takes up two. So 
I don't know, there has got a really wide spread without it, but it's still pretty easy to hit your shots. A lot of the targets that we aim for with um, the grenade launcher are really big targets. So uh, it's not hard to hit them. All right, there we go. Pistol is in the right slot now. So there's some SMG bullets on the table there. Don't pick them up just yet, though. Leave them there till a little later. We ain't got the uh, the SMG yet. We are going to get it, but we don't need it just now. We got some... Is that a, What are they called? Is that a white gunpowder? I think that's what it's called. One of those on the desk, and then we need to head around to the back to grab this picture, which we can examine, flip around, and uh, get the key out of it. The heart's key. So now that that's sorted, head back out of this room. Back the way we came. Out of this door. Nope, wrong way, this door. <laughs> Use the heart's key. And when you come through here, to continue we need to go upstairs, but we want to go downstairs so that we can grab the uh, the badge. I almost forgot about it too, you see I went the wrong way there for a second, I almost forgot to go and grab it. You've got another guy stacking up on this window, and I used to carry a board to try and board up that window, but if you're quick about doing what I'm about to do here, he doesn't bother you at all. So we're going to come into this room, and... Grab the item box that's right here. Or is it just called a jewelry box or something? Combine it with the jewel. So that we can get the badge out of it. And then we're just going to run around the desk this side. And leave because a liquor jumps through the window there. Or the, the two-way mirror. And then just head all the way back the way you came. That's all we need out of that area. Let's go. And that just allows us to get the SMG. Which makes fighting a few enemies a little later way easier. So keep following the stairs. And you got some lockers up here to search. No? Oh, yeah, there we go. I, again, I'm, you can tell I've only just really started doing this run because I take slight wrong turns and stuff. I forget things. But never mind, still a pretty decent run. Hopefully if you guys are watching step by step, it makes it easier to figure out what you're going to do next as well. The great thing about this run is that if you pause it, your timer stops, so you can just sort of, like, follow me along, you know? Anyway, coming out that door, down that ladder, and then we got to head over here towards the back to go down these stairs. And there's two zombies here. If you want to be speedy about it, you can just run down and get past this zombie, but I like to stand on the stairs and take her out just to be nice and safe. Again, just trying to stand still to fight zombies so we don't waste steps, you know? So... Come to the back here, pull this level, and there's another zombie that's just standing up behind you. You should have enough time to pull that thing before he stands up. And to be fair, you can just leave now, if you want. But in a moment, we have to deal with Mr. X. And uh, that those zombies might shuffle back up here and get in your way, if you're not careful. So, now we need to come over here and pull the lever to turn the water off. So, when we go through this door now, that the... Uh, the fire is off. Oh yeah, there's some hangar bullets on the bench right here if you want to grab those. So we're going through this door that's next to me right now. You want to make sure you've got your flashbangs equipped. I'm not sure if I checked. Yeah, I've got it right there. So you can either run back out the door and use the space you've got outside to stun him. And then just run past him. I actually got hit there because, uh, I don't know, I, di I didn't know he swung when he was stunned. So it might be a better idea to lead him back outside and then stun him outside so you can get really wide around him and just head back through this door. But uh, the way I just did it is the quicker way, I guess. But I took a hit off him, which is annoying, but just use a flashbang to get past him, otherwise he can be kind of tricky to get past. And now we're back in the police department. And once we're here, we need to head to the library, I think, so that we can grab the uh, the other key for the locker room. Or the other spare key, whatever it's called. We're going to go through this door where the horse statue is and through here. So we can grab this key and also go and get the uh, the SMG. So use the diamonds key, open that up, grab the other little miniature safe there, head back out of this room. What have we got here? More gunpowder? Nice. Grab that, combine it with the white gunpowder you should already have for more acid rounds. Got a bunch of those now. 
really pays off to grab those acid rounds and however many grenade launcher rounds you find. So now, again, getting a little turned around here, we need to go to the computer, examine the uh, badge to get make it a USB stick, and smash that in the computer. And now we can open up the uh, little locked area to get the SMG. Very useful gun. You get a lot of bullets for this gun, so it makes fighting certain enemies a little later way easier. So, now that we've got that, we're just heading back. We need to go and get the tool so that we can solve the puzzle in the library and get to the clock tower. So head back the way you came. And uh, now we need to head back downstairs. I think there is a shorter way to get downstairs than the one we're taking right now, but it's way more dangerous. So taking this route is a lot safer. And you've only got, like, I think one or two zombies in your way, and there's a liquor in a moment as well, but... The way we get there makes it a lot easier for him to fight. So we're going to come back into the uh, west office right here. And then be careful of any zombies that might be here. But get your grenade launcher ready when you come through this door. Because there's a liquor hanging around right there outside of the armory. And you can sort of peek your head through the door and hit him. Make sure he's dead. And uh, now we're going to crack these safes, which usually takes me a minute. I usually mess up on these puzzles. I don't actually think this one took me as long. But I think these puzzles are RNG, so you can't actually learn the solution to them, I don't think. I might be wrong, because I suppose there are a lot of different combinations you can use, because you can start from any point and just hit the correct buttons to work around in a circle. But I was just trying to... Do it with guesswork, you know, press a button, get the right one, and then figure out what the next one is. Remember those two and trial and error it until I've got it done. And I think I got kind of lucky here and did both of these pretty fast. Although it might take you a minute. But because of the way, I, because of the way they've done the achievement on this game with the steps and not time-based, I suppose this sort of stuff doesn't really matter. Just because you're not doing anything, you're standing still, you're not using steps, so it shouldn't matter towards your 14,000 steps thing. Okay, there we go. Done it. Get both those keys, slap them into the console, and the, I think there's three lockers you'll want to open here. I think the codes are 109, 208, and 203. So yeah, there we go. I was getting a bit confused. 109, and that'll open up the handgun bullets. You can open those without the keys, but I just like to do it all in one sweep right here. So there's 203, and that's the hit pouch that we want. And then 208 is some more flame rounds, I think. So I'll get that open, head out of there, quickly sweep around, and grab your bullets. Flame grenade rounds right there. Always useful. And hit pouch. I think Mr. X showed up around here somewhere and hit me. Maybe. It might have been another run. I don't think I'm far off from getting to the point where I took a hit and ended up being hurt for the rest of the run. But it doesn't really matter. Like I said, you won't... Yeah, I think it's this room. He managed to get a lucky hit on me that took me to caution. Because when you pick up this tool, he shows up. My advice is to just give him the jukes in this room, because it's pretty much just a room you can run around. It's actually really easy to avoid him here. I was just getting cocky and shot him too many times. So, if you just run at about this point... Look at his stretch arm, strong attacks, man. That is some BS. But anyway... I think I did shoot him again here. Try and s slow him down. One more shot, man. One more shot. But yeah, we can't use med items, so we're stuck like this for now. So, uh, now, he's down for a minute. He stays down for a little while, but you need to be quick. Head back through the west office after grabbing that tool. And we're going to head up top here to go back to the library. And this is why we've been taking out those zombies as we've been passing through the library. Just because we don't want them bothering us while we're doing this. But, uh, I'm not sure where I was going here. Check for that zombie, maybe? Yeah, that zombie's down. 
We need to go over here right now. So if you come through that door and just head to your right, you can make it to this a lot quicker than I just did. Slam the tool in. And that'll release this bookshelf for you to move all the way across. And you should hear by a, by, a, by about this point that uh, Mr. X is moving around again. Coming towards you. But if he does burst into the room at this point, I think he doesn't see you. Like, he'll come in from the door that we came through. And then he'll end up going up the stairs. So you can avoid him. But you've got plenty of ammo right now just to shoot him in the face a few times and take him down to his knee again if you need to buy yourself some time. And on this mode, it really doesn't take a lot of shots. It's like five or six shots and he's done. But either way, you want to pull all of these bookshelves across as much as you can. And then head up this ladder. And now we've created a little platform so we can get to the other side of this area to reach the top floor of the main hall. And we're going to head this way. Once you get to the end here, there's uh, another zombie waiting on the corner. I think I actually got really lucky with avoiding one of these guys. Just try to keep your distance because he got... I ran the corner and where Claire was standing, it kind of blocked my vision of him. So he almost grabbed me there. Just be careful of those two zombies. Take them out. Try to get them extra dead if you can. And now we need to head around this way. We've got to come back here in a minute. You can come and grab this... the Well, the item we're going to grab right now, which is a, a like a gear. A large gear. And it takes up two slots. So you can come and grab it a little bit earlier. But, uh... It, like I said, it takes up two slots, which can make things difficult. There's the unlucky grab. Use that defense item. Take these two zombies out. It's kind of awkward from that corner, right? You get in the corner and there's two of them. You might want to work on the one that's in front of you first and then move towards him. And we're heading back out now, but I was trying to just see if there's a sneaky item there, but there wasn't. This guy just stood back up. Be careful when you're running back around this corridor because Mr. X might show up again. I think at this point, for me, he was below me. And if you hear this music, it pretty much means he knows where you are and he's heading in your direction. But, uh, like I said, he's the floor below me, so it's going to take him a minute to catch up. And we need to go into this room now to use the large gear on this machine right here. And that will lower the steps that are next to me. And we need to head around to those stairs. Make sure you grab the large gear back out of the machine before you head up those stairs. And up we go. And we're going to head to the other side to grab the small gear. Here we go. Slam the large gear in there. And then we need to head back down to use the small gear on the other side of the machine. And that will give us one of the electronic parts we need to get the parking pass to get out of the parking area. So I'll come down here. Slam the small gear in there. Skip this cutscene, and then when you head back around to the front here, the electronic part should just be on the floor. Easy money. Head back out this door, and now we're going back towards where we got the large cog gear a second ago. Just be careful heading through this hallway, because there might be more zombies, or those zombies might have stood back up. Mr. X is also still around, so just be wary of where he is. You can see him down on the left there for me, but... Pretty sure he's different for everybody. He can sort of just show up. Or chase you a little harder harder than he did me here. So now we're coming over to the heart's key door that's over here. There's some flame rounds right next to it that you saw me snag on the way past, uh, past there. Grab this electronics box. And then we'll head back the way we came. Just be careful of the zombies. We're going to head through this door now. And this is back towards where we left those SMG bullets earlier and we grabbed the uh, the uh, badge, the stars badge. So back in here and head this way. Get back to this little electronic lock. We need to examine both of these parts that are in boxes to get them out. Just look at the taped area right there. Very nice. Next one. 
big boxes for small parts, kind of a waste, but whatever. I'm not an electronics manufacturer. Slam ball for them in, and this puzzle's pretty easy to follow. You just need to rotate a few parts, really. You need to spin that T section, the blue one, so that it's facing away, and then reroute the power around to get to both switches. Just like that. You get the idea, just kind of looking at the line that's lit up there on my screen, you can sort of follow it. Grab the parking pass, and then you'll get a cutscene which you can skip. And skip this one again, and then you'll gain control of Sherry. So we want to grab the doll that's right behind Sherry, examine that, spin it around to find the block that's in here. And again, this is another point where you've got to do one of these puzzles. I think they're, like I said, I think they're RNG and they mix it up from time to time. I might be wrong. But uh, yeah, just look for the block that matches. You're kind of looking for a, one that has a triangle on the top and a circle on the bottom, I think. Or is it square? Square on the top and circle on the bottom. I think this one took me a minute, but I wouldn't worry about time too much doing this puzzle, just because you stood still, you're not wasting steps, time doesn't really matter. And I know it took me a minute here, I was confused looking for the right parts. There's another square and a circle. <laughs> These puzzles, man. It's basically all you're trying to do is line them up, right? There we go. Could this be it? No, I don't think this was it. Oh, there we go. This could be the one. Nope. See, there's a couple of solutions there. They ma That matches all the way up. So again, we need to look for a square and a circle. There's one. The one I've got in my hands right now. And now we need triangle and square. Triangle on the top, square on the bottom. That's not it. There it is. Circle and star. Hey, It's like kindergarten all over again. <laughs> Grab the scissors. Head towards this wall over here that's really badly taped up. Slice it open with the scissors. In this whole scenario, what happens to the scissors? What? If you've seen this already, you know you get chased around by Chief Irons. You get the scissors there, man. Where's the option to stab him up? Should be able to stab a pedo if I want to. You know what I mean? I don't think anyone's going to care about that. Guy kidnaps child, gets stabbed. Ah, well. <laughs> I don't think anyone's losing any sleep over that. Oh yeah, I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but if you're wondering about the costumes, these are the, I think these are the original costumes, like they're remakes of the original costumes you had in Res the 1998 Resident Evil 2. Which is kind of cool, because they are different in the, the original yeah, ones. It's kind of it's kind of hard to explain. The original ones for this game are new ones, and the alternate ones are the original ones from the '98 version. It's kind of weird, but yeah. Oh no, it's him. Pretty sweet though. That's how Claire's got that sort of uh, jean shorts and jean jacket on. Denim chick. We're gonna come in here anyway and grab this key. You're not really in any danger up until this point. So grab this key, skip the cutscene. As soon as you gain control, turn to your right. And follow the corridor around. Head out of this door. And we're gonna go back up the stairs. All the way around. Whatever you say, bud. Crouch under this, and then we're gonna to wanna to hide behind this table right here. We've got a second here before he catches up to us. I was playing this game in DirectX 12, I don't know if anybody cares about graphic settings, but I was playing in DirectX 12 and it runs so much better in DirectX 11 for some reason. I thought 12 was supposed to be better for performance, but apparently not for this game. It's I get way... exactly the same settings, way better frame rates on Direct uh, DirectX 11 for some reason, I don't know why. Could be my graphics card though, because it's not all that. Show yourself. So, as he comes around the table here, just follow around on the opposite side. Got to keep holding crouch. I feel like I'm mouse and keyboard holding uh, the right mouse click and moving around like this can be a little awkward, especially if you play on low sense like I do. But you've got to keep picking up your mouse. 
which is easy enough to do if you're just holding your mouse, but whilst I feel like whilst holding the right click is kind of difficult to do. Probably way easier on console for this segment. So, just keep avoiding him until he goes, ah, oh, goddammit, and then we're going to come around to you. And we're going to sneak under this table, and at this point you can release Crouch. Just sort of chill. I don't think you actually have to press anything up until this point. Or after this point. Okay, so just be patient. I think when he walks past you here, he actually nudges you under the table. Somehow doesn't see you. Show yourself now! But when he gets a little bit past you, he gets all injured and goes to the bathroom. So here we go. Skip the cutscene. You get run to the door. So the bathroom is in, grab the key, spin it around, and we're heading back the way we came. Fuck is my A lot key. back and forth. I so, see. open up the door, and left out of the door, follow this hallway along, down the stairs, and then we're going back this way again. Unlock this door. And you can't skip this cutscene that plays right now. I'm coming to you, Sherry. Okay. Run, 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 run. Keep following this hallway. And I think you get a cutscene when you reach this door. And when you skip it, you'll be sent back to Claire. And now we have to get to the orphanage as Claire. 30 minutes later, that was more like 2 or 3, I think. F you, Irons. Right, parking permit. If you look in this room as well, there's like a, there's like 50 parking permits and a bottle of wine like he was doing some evil genius shit over all the parking permits. Getting drunk, I don't know why you would do that. But, whatever. Grab the, uh, the bullets that are on the desk right now before we leave. We ran past those earlier, but we got space for them now. And we've also got the SMG, good times, good times. So... Head back to the elevator. Okay, open this up. So if you really want to, and you're prepared to throw away a couple of defense items, which I'm, I want to keep, you can jump back into that room there and grab the grenade launcher upgrade. I'd, I'd recommend not doing it, but if you feel like you really need it, you could probably grab it and manipulate your inventory so that you'll be fine, but... I'd recommend not grabbing it, just save the space. When you put the parking permit in, this guy's gonna show up. We're gonna give him the easy jukes around this police car while we wait for the shutter to open. And then, uh, head out. So. Heading up here, and on this mode, he's really slow. He doesn't get out of here that fast. If you're on hardcore or standard, he gets out of there way faster and you have to get these zombies to knock down the gate and run away from him or flashbang them to get past but we're gonna just kill these zombies that one's head popped and we want to stun this one usually it should only on this mode i think it takes three to the head to like get a, a zombie on the floor tops it should be four or five but if that first guy you hit with three that falls through the gate uh, he should be down for the second or down for a couple of seconds and then you can focus the other one a couple of times and just run past him, you know. And then after following this walkway, you'll come to this point. Take out this zombie that's chilling on the bottom of the stairs. So that was three, I think. And now we've got to deal with dogs, which nobody likes. But uh, hop down here and take out this dog through the fence. Don't try and get cocky and kill these dogs from above, by the way, as you're running down the stairs. Because they'll just respawn. So... Kill this dog. And then kill this dog. See, it's a good idea to just be waiting for that dog to jump up on the car. And they only take a few shots on this, which is nice. These guys can be a bit of a hassle sometimes. So, head to the bench on the court here and you've got 
some more SMG bullets, and then turn around when you've grabbed those. You should see the dogs stacking up on the fence, giving you easy shots just to take them down. You can wait for him to get a little closer if you like, but it doesn't really matter if you shoot him from there. And before you go through this door, there's another dog in between the police cars right there uh, that you'll want to take out. Because if you run through here, he'll just lunge at you. So just try and shoot him before you run through that gate. Make life easy on yourself. And then get onto the bus. Grab the grenade after you've taken out that zombie. Really lucky one headshot pop. If you run out of pistol bullets, don't be scared to switch to your SMG at this point. Um, I know we haven't got a lot left at all. So if that's the case for you, feel free just to use your SMG. You want to take this dog out while he's standing on the bus just to avoid getting grabbed by him, which can be kind of awkward. Sometimes as well, he waits for you on the right, and as you come out, he'll jump on you. But you should have defense items to knock him off if that happens. Just try and come out and be careful and get the shots on him. Just make sure you're facing him, because if you're not facing him and he grabs you from behind you can't use a defense item so as long as you're facing him and he jumps on you you should be able to like stuff a grenade in his mouth or something or a flashbang giving you an opportunity to kill it so we'll skip the little cutscene when we go through the orphanage doors and you'll come to this point head through these double doors through this door on the left where sherry was and uh keep going keep going skip this cutscene with irons and Keep following the, this area around where you were earlier with Sherry to find the ladder at the back right there. So, when you get down the ladder, you need to follow this path round Sherry, down these stairs. And Sherry? reunited with Sherry. Hey! So, follow this around. Don't bother trying to catch up with Sherry. Mr. X is coming. Just leave her there and keep going. Later, bitch. <laughs> keep running. Like I said, don't worry about Sherry. As long as you just keep going and get to the elevator. She she makes it safe and sound. Don't worry. So I'll skip this cutscene when you get to the elevator. And then you'll have another cutscene to skip with Sherry and you regain control in the sewers and we're going to head to the left straight away down this hole right here and spin it around you don't want to go this way I was just I think I was having a look for items but there's nothing Sherry, there can you hear me? so we're going this way and we're going to drop down here literally stink of shit says Claire that's right <laughs> and she's wearing shorts too Ugh. All that nasty shit water getting up in your sniz. So, let's hop up here. Keep going. This area was a little bit tricky uh, tricky for me to figure out, just because some of the enemies here are a little bit different. But, um... I feel like I've got a good a good route for it down that you guys can follow. That's, that's kind of the objective for me. I mean, you might think I'm trying to do this fast, which is nice. I mean, the speed is an element to the way I try and build these runs. But I try and want to... I always want to make something followable, you know? When you come through this door, if you just run straight to where I'm standing right now, wait for a second, and then run towards the zombie that's standing up on your right, you can just run around these guys. You can kill them if you like, but you don't need to. The code to this lock is SZF. And you'll get some more SMG bullets out there. I think that's the last lock to open. There's one more safe that we're about to get in a minute. On, and that should be all the locks. You should right get the there. achievement for doing all the locks. I'm pretty sure that's all of them anyway. So, slam these bullets into your inventory. We're going to head out of this door. There's a map right there if you feel like you need it. Maybe you feel like you're going to get lost. Grab the map if you want. And pull this lever. Although, to be fair, you should just be able to follow me. We don't actually spend a lot of time in the sewers or the labs whatsoever. Surprising how fast you can beat this run when it's down to just rooting. So, right now we're going to run across this walkway that came down after pulling that switch. We need to head to our left. I'm trying to make Claire do a little jig here by switching weapons. Looks like she's handballing. <laughs> we've grabbed the T-bar that's right there on the desk and we need to head back this way. Still handballing away, having a great time. So, the last safe is up here. And the combination, I think it's two, I've messed it up there, two, twelve, eight. It's on the side of the safe anyway. If 
you're struggling. And I messed it up again. Clever boy, clever boy. Two, twelve, eight. That's what trying to go too fast will get you, boys. So we'll grab this piece of the weapon out here and combine it with our pistol. And this allows us to use heavy rounds. And that's going to come in uh, really, really useful a little bit later. One thing I wanted to mention as well is if you do die doing this run, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. So I've got three zombies stacked up here. And I like to hit these guys with a couple of shots just to stun them. Equip a grenade and then chuck it down the stairs. You can go into your menu and equip the grenades rather than having to do it with the space bar, which is kind of annoying. Or whatever the defense item menu is on controller. Just go into the menu and do it because it's quicker. Just try to hit them both with one shot, whip out a grenade, chuck it down the stairs, and that should take out all three of the zombies that are here, because there's another one that's on the left side of the bottom of those stairs as you come down. Right there, but he should be dead from that grenade also. And then we're going to jump into the water there, grab that extra grenade you just saw me grab, come back this way, use the T-bar right here to open up this door. I feel like an auctioneer sometimes trying to explain this stuff. Hopefully you guys can follow it, because that's the point. Anyway, let's keep going. We need to head around here now and grab the key that's hanging up right here. Put that in there and then we're going to drop down this ladder. So I was discarding the, is that the hearts key? I'm pretty sure we're stuck with the diamond key because we can't use the item box. But we can discard the hearts key because we've used that to its fullest potential. Right, we're going up here now. Try to take that um, corner really close, like don't spend too much time in the water because you'll end up getting little enemies shot at you. When you come along here, make sure you've got your grenade launcher ready. And if you hit these guys with a grenade and just sort of run into them, you can get past without taking any damage. Avoid their grabs, although if they do grab you, that's why we've got the grenades. If they get the grab, just be ready to hit your defense item button, which is spacebar on PC. I'm not too sure what it is on console. Probably X or A or something. But uh, yeah, you can use the grenades to get their slimy little hands off you. We're going to head through this door, head left and around this walkway. So you have to get past two of those guys there, and that's why we need the grenades, man. Fighting those guys without the grenades and the grenade launcher is really annoying. So we're going to come down those stairs, come through that door and grab... I think it's the... Is it the queen plug we've got right now, or the king plug? Either way, we need to grab it and use it. Right, it's the queen plug. Put it into this door so that this one will open. Try to be quick doing this part, just because a zombie gets dropped in as you head up these stairs. I think I was getting a little confused here for a second, like... Dude, what am I doing? As you come up these stairs, a zombie drops in. So what you want to do is come up here, grab the plug out of the switch, drop down right here, and then quickly turn around to go to the door and pull the queen plug back out of here. If you're running out of inventory space, you might want to discard something. Um, but if you do that quick, you'll basically keep that zombie locked in there and he won't be able to get to you. And then you need to come to here, put the queen plug back in, put the king plug in this door, and then spin back around and grab the queen plug out of this one. And then around this way to go through this door and grab the king plug out of this socket. So uh, now we have both the plugs and we can leave. Nice. I, mem I remember how long all of this took me the first time through. So long. <laughs> it's crazy when you learn the run how fast you can actually get it done. So now we're going back through the water. We've got another couple of these guys in our way. So just be ready to use a grenade launcher. This one's let me pass, which is nice, but he might be in your way. Just fire a flame grenade at him. And try and run past him. If he grabs you, it really doesn't matter because you've got the grenade. So right here, when you jump down into the water again, you want to get back up on this ledge really quick because one of these guys jumps up out of the water and tries to do sort of a lunge attack at you. If you wait right here, he can't actually do anything. So he'll just sort of sink back into the water. When he does that, you want to drop back into the water. If it's not letting you drop in, back up a couple of steps, approach, and you should be able to drop back in and then just quickly run for the ladder and you shouldn't have to deal with that one that was right there. If you want to be quicker about it, when he's going for the lunge, you can always hit him with a grenade launch around. It's up to you and try and run past him like you did for the others. I just like to try and save my ammo there. Um... Also, when you're trying to jump back into the water, try not to do it too far to the right. Try to be to the left a little bit. Um, but yeah, hopefully 
that part wasn't too tough for you. We're going to come back to this point where we originally entered. Pull this switch so that we can go under this gate. And another one of these guys jumps in through the pipe. And I've tried to run past him. I can't seem to get past him. He always seems to block me. So we're just going to wait. Hit him with a grenade launcher around. And try and squeeze past him. Or they're sort of squirming in agony here. Uh, they don't attack you. And even if they get the grab on you, like I said, you've got grenades. And if you've hit him with a grenade launch around, and then you use a grenade, it should kill him. So it's pretty much a win-win. We're good to go. We're going to hop up onto this ledge anyway and use the T-bar for the second time on this door. And there's some heavy ammo right here on the barrel, but I was trying to think, oh, should I grab this? Should I discard something? What should I do? And then I thought that on the way back, uh, there's actually a hit pouch up there, so you end up having more slots. So I just left them there. Leave them there for now. We will grab them, but we're going to grab them on the way back down. So, when we get up here, the hit pouch is just on the side right here. There is some white gunpowder in here. No, 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 actually, it's not white gunpowder. It's a, it's film. Don't grab that film that's on the desk. You saw the little item flash up. Don't grab that. We don't need that. Also, don't shoot at the zombie that's on the floor, because if you do it, it will alert all of these guys to your presence, and they'll all stack up on the door. But when you come through, you want to shoot that one on the left and this one in the blue jumpsuit. Run past the one you took out first to take out this guy. Get him on the floor, run past him, spin around, and now's a good time to use an extra grenade. But I ended up not using all those G creatures in the sewers, just to full kill all of the zombies we can in that area. And then use the key on this door. There's two uses out of this key, but we're going to come in here. And there's a white gunpowder and a large gunpowder in here. Don't use the large gunpowder yet, because we can save that for later. If you combine two large gunpowders together, you get 60 handgun ammo, which is really useful. Look out here for any remaining zombies. Take them down using the SMG. And then we're going to use the key on the treatment facility door right here. And that's the last use of that key, so you can discard it now. We've got another gunpowder here, which we can, can combine with the white gunpowder to get some more acid rounds. There is nothing in that locker, but there's handgun bullets in this one. I'm not sure if I took these. Yeah, I did. Remember, you can always discard your ammo if you need to make slots. Um, if you've got more than me, then you can always get away with discarding some stuff. Uh, right here, I had to discard the key. Those two uses we just had on it... Um, were the only two uses. I combined a couple of acid rounds as well to make some space. And then we can grab the... What key? What plug is it that's there? I think it might be the Rook key. Or the Rook, the rook plug. Grab that out of the wall. And now you should have enough space to grab these bullets. Our inventory is chock-a-block right now. Absolutely full to the rim. But now we're heading back the way we came. And we didn't kill this G creature. But now he's down there on the right. So we ain't got to worry too much. Let's just keep going. And then we're going to go back up these stairs to head back to the chess piece puzzle. Or the chess plug puzzle. Back through this door that's on your right at the top of the stairs. Over the walkway that we raised earlier. And pretty much already we're leaving the sewers. We've got a little boss fight to do. That's probably the hardest fight in the game. But like I was saying earlier, if you die on this run, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter. It's completely fine to die. So we're going to use these uh, plugs to get them all in the right order. I couldn't pick that one up. But if you're full like I am in this slot, I think it's the queen that goes into this slot. And the king goes to her left, but I couldn't. Um, oh, no, I could take the bishop now. Yeah, there we go. And then put the king in next to it. And I think those three keys are now in the right order. So if you come over here, take the knight plug out. That goes on the far right, right there. It's labeled for you. The next two aren't labeled, so in this plug uh, is the rook, and in the last one is the bishop. Sorted. That'll unlock the door. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. On my way. So I'm pretty sure I, I didn't I didn't die in this run, but I'm pretty sure this next boss slapped me around a little bit. He's definitely a tough one. But another reminder, I know I'm repeating myself, broken record and all that one, but if you do die, don't worry about it too much because there's not a no deaths achievement, so don't worry. Just no meds, and the autosave brings you back, like, right close to where you just were, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, obviously, if you die a lot of times, 
it might mess up your steps achievement. But when you run to the door after doing that puzzle, the third switch is the only one you don't need to set to on, by the way. This guy's going to burst in. And this fight is kind of annoying. You just need to sort of avoid his arm. I'd just say just keep running around, trying to avoid his arm, moving away from him. He's already got a hit on me heel. But this fight was definitely a bit sloppy for me. I'll try my best to help you guys out with it, but it is a difficult one, to be honest. I think also it screwed me over at one point. And I had to send the, the box back to kill him with. I had to do it three times instead of two. Um, hopefully it works out a little better for you than it did me. But I'll try my best to help you guys out. So equip a flashbang here if you can. Or a grenade. Either is fine. Um, or you can hit him with a grenade launcher round. And all you want to do is when he walks through the door and stops the animation of him coming in. You want to try and stun him so you can get past him. But he still got a hit on me. And I was really annoyed about that. But we'll, we'll leave, And another hit. So now I'm in danger. Cheers mate. But at least you know that you can take two hits while you're on caution and he won't kill you. So again, I was just trying to stun him here. Don't spam your grenade rounds, but it's fine to hit him with a couple because we have got plenty. I was just trying to slow him down so that I could get down here. And I was going to use a flashbang right here, I think, to try and stun him on this walkway. Which I'm pretty sure does work. But you can see he got me with another hit. Which is super annoying. He is stunned at this point though. So if you can be quicker about that than I am. You could probably stun him there. Buying you the time to come back here and press this switch. And once you've done that. You want to use the heavy ammo. That we've got in the uh, pistol now. In this pistol. To take him out. And you should stun him up after a couple of shots. I think you should have nine or so. And once he's stunned. You've got an opportunity to grab the flashbang that's behind you. Make sure that's equipped. Um and press the button again to bring it back and hit him. And if he stands up while it's on the way back, use the flashbang. That'll get him stunned for you. There we go. Oof. Skip that cutscene. And this is probably the toughest part of the run for me. Just getting him stunned here, hitting him with these bullets. I managed to get a lucky dodge on him right there. There's also some SMG bullets at the back here, but I think I stunned him... A little bit too close to me because now I have to press the switch again and bring it back right here I think I was trying to use grenades maybe I don't know maybe I did get maybe this didn't screw me over as bad as I thought yeah yeah it did it definitely did because it just grazed him here I was really annoyed look at that what is that annoyed so now I had to do it another two times hopefully if you've got him in the right place there the box will hit him and kill him but maybe he was too far forward. But that is so annoying, man. I was so annoyed by that. This fight could have been way quicker for me. But you've basically got to hit him twice with the box. And, uh, yeah. I got screwed there. Also, for some reason, Claire wouldn't turn around there. I don't know why. I was on my last legs here like, please don't die, Claire. Please don't die. I used another grenade here. Got him all stunned up. Claire was also stunned, but that's fine. Giving me a chance to shoot him a couple more times. Get him stunned. I think I hit him in his back eye there. And then bring the box back around. I think that was it. I think the fight was done at this point. But you, that, that was so sloppy. I wasn't really happy with the run. I got on there. But. Had to do the box three times. Very annoying. But ah well. Hopefully that helps you guys out with that fight. I know it's a tough one. But I'm going to keep saying it. If you. If you die there, it will spawn you just before the fight, uh, giving you a chance to do it again. And uh, yeah, you don't have to use heals or anything, obviously, because you've just loaded in. The only thing that might jeopardize if you die a lot of times is the steps. But uh, hopefully that strat helps. Like I said, it's a tough fight. You want to use the flashbangs to your advantage. And uh, one, of, uh, one piece of advice I'll give you that I didn't do there is maybe use the grenade launcher a bit more maybe that will stun him a little bit more you could always give that a try uh, we've got a lot of rounds well, although i was trying to save them You're be fine. for a little bit later so now we've got sherry and we just need to make our way back this way to the cable car to head to the lab which is the final almost part there, of the game We're almost there. yeah that fight with the buttons man it's a horrible Good. fight the other the other boss fight's quite easy but that one's a bugger. So a cutscene or cue when you get to about here. Skip that. And then we just need to pull this level. 
There's no turning back. No turning back. Claire will remind you that after this point you can't come back here, so... If there is, is anything you want to go and do, that would be the time before you pull that lever. But we're fine. We're just moving on. How long has this taken us so far? An hour and 15, man. So completing this one faster than Re uh, Res 7, that one took like two hours, I think. Just hold on, Sherry. It's okay. Bunch of Resident Evil runs recently. I think next up for me is going to be hardcore mode for Claire. And then uh, I'll probably learn Leon's run. There's also the B runs, right? But I kind of like to do guides that achievements are tied to because I feel like those have uh, more of an impact on YouTube. Uh, by the way, you want to go into this door over here on the left and get a cutscene skip there. But yeah. I feel, like, I feel like they have way more of an impact because people actually uh, are looking for them, you know? People want to know how to beat the game in certain ways and it, cause stuff like this is hard to do, difficult to figure out. Although in the res games, it's a lot to do with the route, right? Just the route that you need to take. And the, actually, the actual difficulty level of it. But anyway, we're going through the only door we can go through, which is the, uh, through, which is the green one. We're going to take out the zombie when we come through the door. And we can just run past the other two zombies. This one and there's one on your right here. I think I shot this one once. Oh no, no, just ignored him. Keep going. Up this ladder. Nice and choppy. We don't have to come back there again, so it's fine to run past the zombies. Follow this vent system around down here into this room. And right, I think in the back corner there's some a large gunpowder. Yeah, and we can combine that with the large gunpowder we already have to make 60 bullets. That's a lot of bullets. Very useful. And when you come through this door, you've got this guy chilling. And then we're going to go through this green door. And in this guy's hand here is the next part to the wristband. You can combine it when you pick it up, but I just spammed F too much and it ended up in my inventory. I had to go back in and combine it manually. So, more flame grenades on the table right there. Don't forget those, evil. So... When you come back in here, look out for the zombie standing back up like it did for me. I think that's it for him. And then head back out of this door, back past the kitchen we just used, follow this corridor around, and we're going to head through the door we came through. And to your right, through this door, to head to the second section of the lab. A big part of the lab is figuring out codes to get stuff done. The great thing about this game is the codes don't change. Resident Evil 7 had a couple of sections with codes in them and they uh, changed in every run or if you tried to input them before you'd found the information that told you the code within the game, they'd uh, change. So you wouldn't be able to like or get through sections of the game quicker, you know, sort of like cheat the section. But in this game you can, which is really good for us because we can just do it a lot quicker and uh, save time, save steps. So, this is the, is this the west side? No, this is the east side, right? East side of the lab. We're going to run through these two doors. And you actually just want to go through the door that's straight ahead of you there. Again, getting a little bit turned around, but it's fine. Run through this room, head through this door, and the SMG here comes in really useful against these guys for taking them out quickly. Um, the first one, there's white gunpowder here, but uh, you don't have to take that. It's up to you if you want to take it. But, just spray at this guy's yellow bits to kill him as quick as you can. Gotta love the SMG. Flashbang on the desk right there, which you might want to grab. Could come in useful. And we're going to use this machine to get the dispenser, the solution dispenser. Grab that. Thank you very much. And then we're going to head over here. And the first code uh, are these four symbols. It's kind of hard to describe to you what they are. I'd say that one, the first one looks like an F. Second one looks like uh, two lines, but yeah, hopefully you guys can punch in these codes. I think I got this one wrong, but these are the two codes you want to punch in. Yeah, I, I deleted those two. So it's, I'm pretty sure it's the one that looks like an, uh, the weird Tetris blocks, the skinny line, that one that looks like a P maybe, and then the fat line. And there you go. Done. 
Could always call him Thin L and Fat L. Take the Fat L there. Hopefully you can follow that code. I know it's a little bit tricky. It's hard for me to describe to you. But they're the two you need to put in. So that we can come into the greenhouse. Come through here. And put the dispenser into this machine. And this puzzle's a little bit tricky. Definitely. But what you want to do is make it so that you've in the biggest container you've got that small amount so you switch it once and then you want to take the fluid out of the one that's, that's got the most in right now and fill the smallest one and then the one on the far right and the one on the far left mixed should give you the right level so i think i was again i was like fiddling around here like thinking oh what do i do but you want to bring the uh the biggest container to the far left and then bring the smallest one over now and hit the button and that should get you what you need. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, it doesn't matter if you take a while. If you're going for the steps achievement, don't worry too much about the time. You can fiddle around with that for a while to get it done. There we have it. Dispenser filled. So now we need to head back into the greenhouse and follow this path around to go to the ladder that we opened. You might have one of these guys in your way. Feel free to spray him down. Good times. Get out, you. SMG definitely makes it a lot easier to fight those guys. So. Now. We're going to go through this door. And. There's no zombies here at the moment. But when you head towards the back of this area, which we need to do, again, I think I was a little bit turned around here thinking, er, which way? But it's this way. Be ready to fight lickers. Pull your grenade launcher out. They're going to drop in at the end of this hallway that we're walking down right now. Two of them. So you want to be reloading as fast as you can, spamming that reload. Hit the one that comes out of the vent, and they should both be sort of on top of each other if you've done that right. Allowing you to hit them both. And I think, yeah, I just ended up spraying them to get them killed. What's this licker doing? Look at the glitchiness on him. He, like, landed on his back. Either way, he's dead now. But you need to kill those guys quick because you've got zombies coming from the rear. Take that zombie out. Head out this door. And right now we need to head up these stairs to go and get the device to... Is it the signal modulator or something? I'm not sure what it's called. Signal module? I don't know, maybe. Take this zombie out as you come through the door. He's on your right. Get rid of him. He should only really start moving once you enter the area. And when you get up here, a zombie drops down on top of you. Get rid of him. Hell is up with you. Get him killed. This is where having all that pistol ammo pays off. And then we're going to come up here and the signal malarkey is over in the back corner. We got some more SMG bullets from the white gunpowder we found just there. Grab the sig signal, is it modulator? I can't really read the text there in this preview window. Right, we got a zombie lurking around in the back. Get rid of her. And she's down, and we're going to head back the way we came. If you leave these zombies alive, and just run past them, I'm guessing when you come back this way, they're all just going to be stacked up on you, so it kind of pays just to shoot them along the way. They're all down for the count at the moment. I think when we come back, they do stand back up. Watch out when you run through this door for zombies lurking around, because they might have shuffled down the hallway towards you. But when you come back this way, there are going to be zombies here. Just be ready to fight a few more. Shouldn't be any more liquors though. I think that's the last of the liquors for the entire run now. So, she's down. Head to the back and look at the code that we've got here. It's Murph. So we need to go into the signal. Malarkey and examine that. Change the uh, code at the top to whatever it is, which is Murph. And then match this up, which can be a little difficult. Um, it's kind of easy to get it really close. Just keep fiddling with it until you get it there. There we go, that was it. Beautiful. When it matches, use it with the panel. And that should turn the electricity on in this area. And then we need to go back down here. More zombies. Get rid of that guy. He's down for the count. I'm pretty sure you could just leave that zombie alone if you want. Although if you don't, when you come out of this area in a minute, he might be waiting on the door for you. So it's just less risky to take those guys out. Because they can always get surprise grabs as you come through the door. Kill this zombie because she's going to stand up. Head pop. Beautiful. Keep going. 
head around here and slam this dispenser into this machine. You'll get a little cutscene here, skip that. And we'll get the frozen solution back. Now we can go and kill the stuff in the greenhouse and go and get the antidote for Sherry. So, heading out this door, back the way we came. That zombie is definitely dead. And we're going this way again. Back up the stairs where we got the signal much later. Uh, keep it going, keep it going. So one thing I wanted to say, I know I did say earlier, we get a lot of uh, hip pouches. There's a few zombies here. Get ready with the SMG for these guys. I think the uh, two other zombies that we fought earlier are also stacked up here, so yeah, be ready for them. I like to use the pistol for the zombies. SMG for the plant dudes. Here we go. Get out of here, you. I'll carry on in a second. So yeah, the last hit pouch, if you haven't got them all yet, is in the nap room. If you look at the map, you should be able to find the nap room. It's where we grabbed the blue upgrade for the wristband where that guy's hand was hanging out. If you go back there and use the signal modulator, the hit pouch is there. One of the hit pouches is there if you want to get that cheap. I'm not going to go through here. But you have to go back to that nap room. So when you come back in here, use the SMG on these dudes. Take them down. Sit down, dickhead. Beautiful, so bad case of green bell end right there. And we're going to use the frozen solution right here. And that'll kill the planet. Or the plants. Skip this cutscene. And now when we head into there, we can get the last upgrade for the wristband. But uh, when you come through, you have to head straight down here. Be careful of these guys because they will stand back up and stuff. Just be ready for them. Make sure they don't get any grabs on you, and we're going to grab the last wristband upgrade, combine that with the wristband. It's the senior staff card or whatever it is. And SMG these guys. Get rid of them. Let's keep going. Now when you head back into this room, there's going to be one of these green bell ends hanging around. So spray him. Get rid of him, and then we're heading back the way we came. Again, just watch out for these green guys standing back up. But we should be good. I was fine here, but they could always be lurking for you. Just be careful. So now we're heading back to go and get Sherry her uh, antidote. Through this door. Back into the main chamber. And we need to go to... Is it the north side now? Or the west? I can't remember. Let me see. It's on our left right now. I'm not sure what the direction is. Mm, I think it's west. But either way, it's the, the purple switch. Let's go. So. We have two more boss fights. Both of them are pretty easy. We have an excess of ammo, so we're good. We're going to be just fine. And the final boss fight is really, really easy. With Claire, at least. I'm not sure what it's like for Leon. Um, but it's not too hard. We're going to examine this right here. And the code we need is OSS. So let's tune that in. Get it in the right place. Here we go. Beautiful. Give that a use. That's going to turn the lecky on in this place. Nice. And then we're going to head around here through this lab, through this door now. So that we can go and grab the antidote. What's that there? Oh yeah, why not? White gunpowder. When I first ran through this corridor, I thought it was all going to it was going to go Resident Evil movie on me and try and chop me to pieces or something. I was going to have to go all ninja on it and whatever, but it didn't. I was quite relieved. So now we get here, we're going to go to the left, go over to this machine, and uh, use nothing. Just back out of your inventory, and then you'll get a cutscene. And Claire will get the antiviral agent by using Sherry's pendant. And then when you come back across here, the boss encounter is going to kick in. Another cutscene. Skip that bad boy, and uh, get ready with the grenade launcher. 
This guy gets stunned pretty quickly with the acid rounds, so I was just sort of spamming him here, using the pistol in between to shoot at his eyeballs, get those puffed. Just keep switching between that and the grenade launcher. If he gets too close, smack him with the grenade launcher bullet. Run away, because he'll get stunned up from that. I think he gets him pretty close to us here. Um, this boss fight really doesn't take long at all with all the ammo we've got. This is kind of why we kept the grenade bullets. And I think even after the fight, we've got a bunch of grenade ammo left. So I'll get rid of him. Let's keep moving, keep moving. Feel free to rotate if you need to. And, you know, you can always use the pistol just to hit his eyeballs. I think right there he was going to grab the panel on the wall to chuck at us. But I hit one of his eyeballs and it stopped him in his tracks. Going for them eyeballs right now. Pretty sure I popped this one soon. There we go. That's both of them. So when you've popped his eyeballs, his group eyeballs will pop out. You'll really get a good look at his harpies. Shoot him with whatever you can. Just keep shooting him. Grenade launch is probably the best thing. Another one. I think this is the last one. There we go. Skip that. And... Uh, one dead boss. Let's head up the elevator right here. You got a bit wrecked, didn't you? Alright, so heading back through here. Gotta get back to Sherry. And pretty much that's all we need the grenade launcher bullets for. So we will have to fight a couple more enemies, but they're just standard ass enemies. So if you want to use the grenade launcher from this point onwards, feel free. Um, we do have a little fight with the boss again at the end, but you get a minigun for that, so not complaining. And uh, now we want to head back, I think it's the east side, is it, or is it the north? No, it's the north, you go to the, back to the north side and uh, help out Sherry. This way, back into the security room, which I just ran past, I think. Yep, <laughs> this way. Skip that cutscene. Now we get the last upgrade from um, is it Anna. I don't know. Sherry's mom. We get it off her. And now we can access the central elevator. Keep going. Keep going. Hmm. Yeah, you have to use the switch. Is me trying to get cheeky and running past it? Very, very little left to do now. Very little. Alright, down we go. Again, standing still in the elevators, don't waste steps. Should have a conversation with Sherry here somewhere. There we go. Thanks until I get you out of this place. Okay. So, when these doors open, keep heading round, follow this room all the way around, and to the exit. So, we're going to go left through that door and keep following down here. Got a save point right there, no saves though, not going for any saves. I'm pretty sure there is an achievement for doing the game without saving, so feel free to save if you want to. Um, I just wanted to get another saves run in there, I guess. Why not? I'll probably be saving a lot more when I do my hardcore run. I'm guessing I can probably get that done in like two and a half hours. Three tops. Right, so keep following this pathway around. Don't worry about Sherry, just keep running. We're going through that door that's on our left right there. And left again, down this ladder. You can just run past all the enemies that are standing up there. Don't worry about them at all. And when we get down here, I'm going to go and try this door at the back. Of course. Stupid things locked. And Sherry will appear next to us. Sherry, what are you and she'll start... Open it from the other side. And she'll start working towards unlocking the door, and you'll have... A couple of these guys start dropping in. I had some excess grenades here, so I just thought I'd use those. 
feel free to kill them how you like. Like I said, we do get the minigun for that final boss fight. And if you manage your bullets properly, that's all you need in this mode. Um, I don't know, though, you might want to be careful and save some bullets for fighting him. But uh, there she goes. Unlock the door for us then, love. Come on. Thank you. Right, let's go. Okay, follow this path all the way around through this door right here. And you got a zombie to kill. A couple of shots on him should take him down. Use whatever you like. And let's keep going. We are going to use that. So, head to the opposite side of the train car and hop up inside so that you can head over here to the control panel and grab the fuse that's right here. So if you haven't got space for that, you need to make it. So if you need to drop something, go ahead and drop some stuff. But uh, once that's grabbed, head over this way, open up the door, slam the fuse in, and skip the cutscene. And we got the minigun that's right here on the side. Yoink. And when we head back towards the train car now, we're going to get jumped one final time. So start spraying at him in the face with the minigun. And one tip I can give you for this fight to make it really easy is just to stay by the edges right here. Unload him. Unload on him, just like that. And you'll see him sort of do that attack where he slams his claws into the ground and tries to sprint to you. If, you just, if you're on the corner by the side of the uh, cart. You can just run around it and he won't be able to hit you with anything. Also keep an eye on him when he's jumping because he might jump towards you sometimes. But uh, when he when he's climbing like that, don't waste your minigun bullets. Just try to attack him when he's on the floor. Um, keep your distance. Stay by the ends of the train car so you can run around it if he starts lunging at you like that. Look out for that attack. If, as soon as he starts to do it, just run to the opposite side and uh, he shouldn't get any hits on you. Here we go. Unload on his face. Spray. Okay. And then he'll get all mushy. Don't get too close to him, obviously. Just stay stay away. Keep that distance. Although I'm guessing you could probably take a hit at this point and you'll be fine. Keep spraying him. And uh, he should die pretty soon. There we go. Game done. Finished. GG. And if you want to watch the final cup seat cutscenes, that's up to you. But there's a good chance that it counts towards your final time. So I was just skipping them. 1 hour 34. Pretty good time. Really happy with that. I, I haven't seen any speedruns for this game yet. Although, to be honest, I haven't really been looking. Except for over on speedrun.com. Um, so hopefully this helps some people out. If you're just trying to learn the route to develop another speedrun. Maybe learn where Claire's item path is. This could also help you out with that. Uh, pretty good run though. Really happy with that. Let me know if you guys got some achievements off this, if that was what you were going for and this helped you out. I was really pleased with how this run turned out in the end. Also, I'll be going through Hardcore uh, with Leon and Claire. I'll try to get those out. They shouldn't be out yet, but uh, I will get them up as soon as possible. Again, let me know if you found this useful. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Have a great day. And until next time, take it easy.